Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom from the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, where we have an interactive live stream. And today, we are going to be talking about players traded from every NHL team. This is part one, Anaheim to Montreal in alphabetical order. We did this from my live stream. I tell people, hey, we're going to, which player do you think could be traded from every team? We have a little discussion about it and we come up with this. You can be part of that by hitting the subscribe button. Every, uh, usually every morning or I'll send out a uh, notification of when I'll be live and you can come on and enjoy it and have fun because there's frolic. Oh, there will be frolic. There will. It's all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers. If you like the four major sports and all the teams within those four major sports, you'll love that website. I bet you, I bet you, you will. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, we're going to start off with the Anaheim Ducks and uh, who may be traded from that team. Again, all done on my uh, live stream interactively with all the participants. I'll have a little coffee. Okay, Ducks, Rick, um, we have Raquel. Makes sense, Rick or Raquel. Uh, what, this team's got to be rebuilding here. Are you going to really resign a 28-year-old player who has been not really hitting out of the park, although I don't blame him. He probably has a lot more in him. It's just doesn't have much to work with. Uh Last last year, though, nine, 28 points in 52 games. That's pretty poopty for a guy who's supposed to be putting up points. Hopefully, he can knock it out of the park a little bit up until the trade deadline and pull out a draft pick from him because it's time. Tell me, Anaheim Ducks fans, isn't it time? Uh, Adam Henrique, if you can find somebody to take that contract, I'm not sure that that is uh, maybe if they retain or something of that nature is one of the players, but Manson, Josh Manson was one of the players we came up with. It's his last year of his contract. Apparently, they tried to trade him to Winnipeg. And what they're looking for, what Bob Murray is looking for, is a first-round pick and a prospect. And apparently, no other team was willing to offer this but Winnipeg. However, Manson has a no-movement clause. Uh, um, you know, moderate 12 team, I believe it is. And he, he nixed it. So hopefully he rocks it because, I mean, everybody's been struggling on the Anaheim Ducks the last two years. This team is just not flying very well at all. Uh, hopefully he rocks it, though, and they can bring something back for him. Just please. The good news is from that information I just gave you, I think Ducks fans who are looking for a rebuild here is that they tried to trade him, right? So that's good. Uh, that is a rumor, by the way. No real factual information. It came from the athletic. Uh, next, uh, what do we got? Uh, Gibson. Yes, please, please trade Gibson. I mean, the poor guy. He's 28 years old. He's in the prime of his career. Let him go out and try to win a cup somewhere. He looks frustrated as heck there. It's time to move on and do a real build here in Anaheim. Stop it with these holding on to your veterans. Uh, next, Arizona Coyotes. Um, could be a lot of players traded here, but we put the two big ones with uh, Phil Kessel, which is, is apparently Phil Kessel even asked to be traded from Arizona. Um, they're just looking for a suitor. I think they'll find somebody out there for him. Although the guy... Uh, Arizona, apparently he doesn't even work out in the summer. He just fishes and stuff like that. That's what I've heard. Uh, we've all heard about, if you've ever seen him in the locker room, he looks like he has a dad bod. Like he doesn't look like an athlete, but he keeps crushing at 20 goals and 23 assists in 43 games last year. Somebody's going to want to pick that guy up. They'll, they'll find a suitor for him. I'm pretty sure. And I would imagine before the season starts, it'd be a little awkward to start with them. And the other one that's been talked about a lot, of course, is Dvorak. And uh, personally, I'd only be trading him if he asked to be traded, which is completely possible. Uh, this organization doesn't owe direct, they don't have an arena. 
Uh, they it's on it's up in the air whether they're going to stay in Arizona. You know, I, a guy like Christian DeBoer could be kind of like, you know what, I'm 25 now. I see a deep rebuild going on here as they keep on collecting draft picks like crazy and doing a good job at it. But a guy like Christian DeBoer, you know, let him go. Let him go. Um, then there's several other, like, uh, if Dimitri Yaskin works out, you could get a pick for him. And all, I think pretty much everybody on this roster could be taken for picks. Uh, uh, or, or if a real good deal comes for prospects, even possibly Keller uh, could be moved. Uh, Nick Schmaltz, like whatever. You just they just they're doing a teardown rebuild, trade everybody, bring some free agents in the next year, repeat until you're good. That's what I think's happening there in Arizona. Uh, the Boston Bruins, not much to be traded away here. Some of they, several people in the stream brought up Charlie Coyle. However, I unless they retain, and I don't see Boston kind of being in a position to retain money. Uh, they're trying to do a quick retool here and and uh, still be uh, relevant for the next little while. Uh, they would have to retain money on Charlie Coyle unless he starts doing well, and then. You don't really need to trade him, right? So I, I didn't put him down. Uh, the one that everybody knows about, though, is Jake DeBrusque. Jake DeBrusque, last year he's going to be an RFA next year, hasn't been working out in Boston. I'm sure they'll find a home for him eventually here. What might be holding this trade back is how much DeBrusque is looking for on this next contract. But uh, it's the only player I really see being traded. Tell me what you guys think, Boston Bruins fans. Uh, anybody here? I, I think they've kind of set themselves up to want to keep everybody that they've acquired and, uh, you know, try to go for it one more year. The only other thing I could think of is if Rast does come back, one of the goaltenders maybe gets traded, but we'll see. Apparently, Rask has said that he's kind of come back on the cheap and, be, and allow Boston to use his services any way they want, even if it's going to be a third string goaltender. So that would mean like league minimum. He doesn't care about the money anymore. He just doesn't want to leave Boston. So tell me what you think about that, Boston Bruins fans. Uh, Buffalo Sabres and who could be traded. Um, surprisingly, not too many. Of course, Jeff Skinner would be beautiful if you could find somebody to take that, but uh, I don't see it happening. <laughs> Uh, Kyle Pozo um, is a possibility as well. However, he does get them to the cap floor. He is an assistant there. I think they'll probably hold on to him because they would have to retain, um, which is possible. They could retain $3 million for the next two years and get a draft pick out of him. Uh, very possible. That's really what they're looking for here too, Buffalo. They want to rebuild but they want to do it a little faster than Arizona they do have some good young pieces in Tage Thompson Dylan Cousins uh, Casey Middlestat was looking good in the second half last year one of the uh, ones brought up was Darlene and I think they would loathe to trade Darlene however we still haven't got a contract for him yet and it's getting close to uh, it's getting close to time for training camp to start wow uh if you had to trade Darlene, i think it would be really too bad honestly that that really would set them back quite a bit um hopefully they get a contract done because you're you're selling on the low right now Darlene has not progressed as good as well as everybody expected as neither really none of their prospects have so you could still get a decent, uh, a good return for him, I'm sure. A uh, big uh, defenseman that was on a poor development team develop that had development poorly, uh, that was supposed to be almost a superstar defenseman, I imagine. But we, ha I haven't heard anything about trade talks with him or anything of that. So it'll be interesting to see. What happens with Dolly in there? Tell me who else you may find here that they could. Zemgus Gergensen's possibly for a pick at the 
at the deadline. You know, guys like that, just to make, just to get, just to grab as many picks as possible. Next, Calgary Flames. And the two players that have been talked about being traded by the Calgary Flames have been, for a long time, have been Goudreau and Monaghan. But as it stands, bringing in Blake Coleman, and that was the two that came up in the stream with the participants of the stream. Uh, with Blake Coleman coming in um, and really being the only major move so far besides Tyler Pitlick, I think the whole this whole deal was these these acquisitions were to make it so Matthew Kachuk didn't have to do the dirty work as much anymore and could focus on his offense. Um, and uh, I think that's a, actually a pretty good move. And it could really make some room for guys like Goudreau and Monaghan to get back on track again. Monaghan, though, he just looks, has looked fairly uninspired the last uh, few years. Um, he's still out there. He still could be traded. However, you'd want to get a center back in return. Johnny Goudreau is going to be a UFA next year. If they're going to trade him, it is the time. Uh, I'd say it's about 50 50 right now. It's all going to depend on how good he does up until the deadline. If this core that they've worked out doesn't do well up until the deadline here, I think you could see some significant moves. Um, we didn't put him in there, but I'll also throw in Noah Hannafin. Um, I think Noah Hannafin could be used with a pick to um, to grab another defenseman or somebody of that nature. I I'm just not sure that Noah Hannafin has progressed as well as Calgary has wanted to. And there may be a perceived higher value out there from other teams. He's only 24. He still has upside. It, I think that would happen if Calgary is really out of it. Uh, so those are the guys that we came up with in Calgary. Who would you think they're in, uh, in Calgary land or anybody else? Put in the comment section, what do you think? could be traded from Calgary. The Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, I think this team is kind of set up. They got Kesper, or Jas, Jasper Kokaniemi here. Uh, I imagine that Montreal is going to match that, but we'll see. But the two players that we came up with were Nito and Rider, since he was pretty much left off the... Uh, he was left for free for Seattle, and Seattle didn't pick him at $5 million uh, I'm sure that they could find a home for him at the deadline if they have a guy like Jarvis come up and push for playing time this year, which is very possible, maybe even before the deadline. And there are probably teams that would be happy to have, you know, need a rider out there. I mean, he had a good year offensively last year, if I remember correctly. Uh, probably one of his most consistent years. 34 points in 56 games with 20 goals. Uh, but a poor playoffs. And that's really, it's kind of the heart that seems to be the issue with Niederreiter. He's got the talent, but not really as much of the pushback as you'd like to see, hence the reason. But I'm sure there's a team out there that would like some more offense that would give him a shot, even for as a rental. Um, and then Jake Gardner, but I don't know. I can't see anybody, unless they retain and, Carolina is not a team that likes to retain too much. Um, I think he'll just play out his two years here and uh, whatever happens, happens. It's possible if they if he ends up making it on the roster and uh, putting in a decent year, somebody might want him out there. But besides that, I don't see too many uh, players being traded here, possibly some draft picks. Uh, to especially if Anderson and Ranta go back to their injured ways, uh, that would be very unfortunate. And they'd have to go find a goaltender. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, very interesting team all around here. What the heck? I can't even read my own. Strom is the big one. Uh, Dylan Strom has been out there for a long time as a trade possibility. He can't seem to find his place on a roster. He's going to be a restricted free agent next year. His skating is not to, hasn't really developed the way they would have liked. And I, 
I have a feeling that they're not interested in giving him a qualifying offer pass over three million. Um, so anyone that wants to pick up a draft pick, he does put up some okay points. Uh, you know, two years ago he had thirty eight points in fifty eight games for Chicago, but last year. 17 points in 40 games for a guy who isn't stellar defensively and tries to play in a top six is not very good. Um, that would be the biggest one for me. Uh, I don't see really – tell me what you think. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys that are not a big fan of Alexander Nylander out there. Um, however, I'm not sure that he's too high on anybody's list after being injured a lot last year. So – don't really see all that much trading going on here for Chicago. I think they set up their defense and uh, possibly Calvin DeHaan, if they're right out of it, he's going to be a UFA. Uh, if they're right out of it and they want to pick out a pick, but I don't see Chicago being right out of it here. If you've got Marc-Andre Fleury as a goaltender, an average team becomes a playoff team pretty quick. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. And... The two that come to mind, uh, Corpus Allo has been talked about for quite some time. Probably between Merzlikens and Corpus Allo, Corpus Allo would be the guy they wouldn't mind trading. They're both going to be UFAs next year. Um, so maybe either, especially if they have an eye on another goaltender in the offseason. Um, but I think Corpus Allo is likely the one there. Um, Merzlikens still has a lot of upside. Um, and has looked better as a goaltender over the tenure there. So I could see him staying. Um, the other one, of course, is Lion A. They signed him to a one-year deal. They're going to try him out, see how he does, see how he likes it in Columbus with the new coach and all of that. They may give him an extension, but I could also see it be a signing in order to trade at the deadline. Uh, if they're right out of it, there could be other players as well to pick up draft picks, but honestly, this roster isn't going to pick up too many draft picks. Most of their young players, they'll like to keep, and most of their older players, um, they would probably either like to keep or wouldn't bring enough back for it to matter. So those would be my guys from Columbus. Dallas Stars. Oh, I missed Colorado. Okay, I'll do Colorado at the end. Uh, Dallas Stars. Hudobin and Klingberg. Again, this roster is set up to play together. I don't really... Possibly, like if they're out of it, maybe they trade Radulov instead of trying to re-sign him at 35 years old. You know, those kind of things could happen. If they're right out of it. I just don't see them being out of it. So I don't see them trading those guys. Either they walk or they re-sign them for maybe less conch. Klingberg is going to be a UFA. And the thing is, is they've got a guy, a kid named Hanley coming up that can take that spot soon. Um, I think John Klingberg may be looking for as long a contract as possible. And it's possible they could think, oh, you know what, Hanley could probably do that. We can get a pick for him now, but uh, it, it would definitely be hard to do at the deadline. So I, I think it's quite likely that there isn't Joel, Joel Hanley. That's not the Hanley I'm talking about, by the way. It's the prospects here. It's Sorry, not, it's Thomas Harley, not Joel Hanley. He's going, he's going to be really good. It looks like he's going to be really good. I think they're going to resign him, though. That's my that's my thinking. I don't see too many moves going on here except for Hudobin. Hudobin really ticked off bonus last year. I don't think they picked up Holtby because they want to keep Hudobin. And Ottinger is their goaltender of the future. And Bishop, he's injured now, but I don't I doubt very much they want to keep a three headed monster there in goal. I think Hudobin is most likely to be traded. And uh, since we got it here, I'm going to go to Colorado. For some reason, right there. Colorado Avalanche. Colorado Avalanche. Uh, 
interesting the Colorado Avalanche. One, the guy that came up, and I think it's possible as much as you wouldn't like it. You would, you would, and you wouldn't. So they got Bowen Byram coming up. Uh, you know, Devon T- Devin Taves, uh, Kale McCarr signed up big. But it's possible that Samuel Gerard could be a little bit of a luxury for them. We brought it up that they could use him in a trade to make up cap room for what is going to be a lot of players they possibly need to sign next year or would like to sign or replace. Burakovsky, Kadri, uh, Valerie Nachuskin, all of these guys are going to have to be signed, and they're strong on defense and have some pretty good defense, uh, good players coming up. Uh, Gilbert should be ready to take on a role. Justin Barron is a fantastic uh, prospect coming up. So it's possible. I think it's unlikely, at least not this year, maybe in the offseason, uh, if, if they deem it necessary with who they want to resign. But I'd be hard, it'd be really hard to trade that contract. That's a beautiful contract. $5 million a year for long term. Um, so, what do we else do we have? Uh, Caudry. Caudry was the other one. Caudry's going to be a UFA next year. Um, I could see, see, I could see Gerard and Caudry in a pick or something like that to get your number two center if you're not satisfied with Caudry, which. They could not be. He's been a problem um, with uh, getting suspended. One more suspension, and who knows what happens to Kadri. Um, Also, he's been kind of declining as well. Um, He hasn't been on the right trajectory for a guy who's only 30 years old. 32 points in 56 games. Every year since 2016-17, his point totals have dropped. Now, last year was in the 56, uh, 56 games. But still, when you got a guy that won suspension, he could be gone. You could, I could see them packaging him and somebody like Gerard and getting a big time second line center. It's possible. Uh, next, Detroit Red Wings. And... We had Fabry as a possibility, 25 years old. He's going to be a UFA after this year. Um, may not be fitting in there perfect. They could re-sign him, I suppose, if he, as long as he doesn't try to go too high. The thing is, is Fabry's kind of put up the numbers, kind of numbers that could push them higher than Detroit wants to go when they're worried about youth. Not to mention... 18 points in 30 games, 31 points in 52 games. Eh, he's on the borderline, um, but he could get a you could get a draft pick for him. There's going to be a lot of, you know, there will be teams that want offensive depth at the deadline, and Fabry would be a guy that they might be able to get a second or third round pick for. They've got a lot of young players come up that can take his role. It seems like a reasonable option for them to trade him. Grice, of course. Uh, 35 years old, does he want to go for a cup somewhere? Do, they, are there going to be teams out there that would really like a good backup because of injuries or whatever? Probably. I could definitely see him being a trade chip at uh, the deadline for Detroit, assuming they're not in it. And I, I don't think they will be, but you never know. These young players could just break out this year, and uh, this team could be a lot better than people expect. I know a lot of uh, there's a lot of good, really good hockey guys out there on YouTube that are putting them pretty close to the playoffs this year. Um, Nick Letty, uh, I think that was a pickup to trade, likely. Uh, I, I talked about that on previous videos. Not really sure what he was doing there. I think he and Lamorello kind of had a favor-favor thing going on. He's going to help with their power play, maybe teach these kids how to, because their power play was horrible. Uh, he can kind of act as a player coach until he gets moved on. Uh, I, and I do believe he'll move on and get a, they'll get a pick for him at the draft, as long as they're out of it again. And then possibly Stahl. I doubt Stahl, Mark Stahl. 
He just wants to stay in Detroit. I've, he said it over and over again. I'm happy here. I want to finish off my career here. He doesn't like to move his family around and stuff. So high, I think that's a less likely one. Uh, next, the Edmonton Oilers. And this is a team that's kind of been built to stay the way it is. It's the way it would want to do it. But the interesting one that came up in the conversation with the live stream uh, participants was Jesse Pulley Harvey. And uh, it makes sense if, if he's putting up numbers similar to the was the last year, um, or maybe a little higher, they may, there probably will be teams out there that will see upside in them. And uh, he's not a bad two way guy, but those aren't stellar numbers when you're playing with McDavid. However, there could be teams out there that may be interested in giving him a shot, especially teams that are outside of the playoffs looking in and looking to kind of retool or rebuild. So you could use him, possibly a draft pick, and uh, be able to, like, be their first round draft pick next year or, you know, something like that, or maybe a prospect to get a better right winger to play on McDavid's line. I could see it. Um, Then it's like Kyle Turris. But, I mean, the thing about Kyle Turris is I hear he's working out in the gym hardcore this summer. If he's third-line center caliber, I doubt he gets traded, assuming that they're in it at the deadline, in the playoffs picture of the deadline, which we they better be, or man, oh, man, there could be a lot of huge moves here. But um, if he is, then they probably won't want to trade him. And if he's not, they probably won't get much back for him. So... Maybe he gets traded. Russell and, uh, of course, Koskinen. Koskinen would be to get a better backup goaltender, um, possibly Russell, too, and a draft pick. That's something that I do believe that they're going to need to get here. Probably use a draft pick for that, but Koskinen and a draft pick or something makes a heck of a lot of sense for that. Uh, Florida Panthers. Uh, I Okay, this was interesting. First of all, they're set up here to be uh, – let's just look at their depth chart, shall we? They're set up to be a strong team this year. Um, I don't see them trading too many players, but one t- player I could see is Owen Tippett down here on the fourth line. Um, he really has been buried in this lineup, and even more so since they picked up Sam Reinhart. So – I could see them, if they see something on their defense, they'd like to get better, which is possible. I'm not a big fan of Marcus Nudevara. Uh, Forsling had a great year last year and will probably keep that going. Radko Gudis, I think at this stage of his career, I'd rather see him down here in Nudevara's spot. So I could see them using Owen Tippett as a chip who put up 18 points as a 22-year-old. He's got a great shot. He really deserves an opportunity out there. I could see them using him as a trade chip to get a top four if they're crushing it at the deadline, which I totally expect them to do. Um, What else do we have here? Marchment and uh, possibly Gudas to be used as well to get that same sort of package there in uh, Florida for, for some depth on defense at the deadline. Um, they've got a lot of free agents, too. If they were out of the playoffs, I could see them trading them. Petrano and Nolachari. And, uh, Mason Marchment was one also that, we, that came up. He could be buried. I could see them trading him at the deadline for a pick, regardless of the situation, just because he's kind of buried in the lineup. But if they're in it, I doubt. I think they look more towards re-signing these players than actually uh, trading them. So... Next, Los Angeles Kings. And Doughty, Doughty, I don't, I don't understand Doughty. I, I think a lot of, a lot of uh, teams figure that a lot of the guys on the stream, I should say, thought that Doughty was, uh, that L.A. was not going to be in it this year, so they'll use Doughty. First of all, that contract's going to be very difficult to move. Second of all, I think L.A. is going to be a lot better than people think. Um, so, But there's a lot of mixed ideas of how good L.A. is going to be this year. That's why they also have Brown and Lemieux 
quick. I put Turcotte. And I know that you're like, well, no way we're trading Turcotte. You got uh, Byfield, now Philip Deno, and Jay Kopitar, um, Jarrett Dolan Anderson, who I made a mistake on his, uh, uh, Gabriel Velarde, but I think he can play wing. They're stacked up the middle is what I'm trying to say. And honestly, they could use some serious uh, wingers on this uh, on this team. I have follows not bad, not ideal though, not an ideal top line left winger. Dustin Brown, I don't think they'll trade him. I think they're going to be closer to the deadline than most people are to closer into the playoffs at the deadline than most people think. Uh, but they could use an upgrade. They already tried it with Victor Arvidsson. We'll see how he turns out after some down years in Nashville. But they could take a guy like Turcotte. When you're stacked up the middle like L.A. is, they've set themselves up really well. If you can use a center to get a winger, you can get some crushing wingers for a guy like Turcotte. And that's all they really need here is some wingers and maybe some defensive depth. So I put Turcotte. I don't think it'll be Byfield. I think it'd be more likely be Turcotte. Yeah, hard pill to swallow. Turcotte's a great talent. But... If to get a top line right winger and uh, maybe even a defenseman or a draft pick when you're already stacked up the middle, I think it's worth it. Tell me what you guys think there in, in LA. Minnesota Wild. Um, they got Hartman, Dumba, Rask, and then of course Kaprizov. And that's really the big thing here, right? Kaprizov. Is Kaprizov going to sign? I really just want to know. They got to have a feel by now if Kaprizov actually wants to be in Minnesota. Apparently, he doesn't want to sign a long term contract. They're trying to work out a short term contract. But if they can't work out a contract at all, you know, it may become apparent that really Minnesota isn't where his heart is and they have to move on from him. That would be tragic. But. I can see it happening. Uh, I could. I. I doubt it's going to happen. I do think they're going to get somebody something for him, but and then the other guys, uh, Victor Rask, uh, and Hartman, you would get a pick for. I think Ryan Hartman has worked himself on this lineup, and they've kind of fallen in love with him at one point seven million. He can do a lot of things. Um, he's really grown on this team, and I. I just don't. Unless they're like way out of it, and I don't see Minnesota being completely out of it, that contract is fine. I think they'll hold on to it. Um, Victor Rask, possibly, he's going to be a UFA. Uh, if they're out of the playoffs and somebody wants some depth, maybe they take him. But that's really not much there, not much return there. Tell me who else you think. Oh, by the way, Matt Dumba. The guy has moved, they, they have like moved mountains to keep Dumba up until now with two expansions. They love him. I just don't see him being moved. I really don't see him being moved. What do you guys think out there in Minnesota or any other hockey fans? What do you think about Dumba possibly being moved? Uh, the Montreal Canadiens. And we had uh, Drew Oan. Um, I really hope he has a bounce back year here. And if he does, I don't see them moving him. Uh, and if he doesn't, even if they do, they're going to have to retain very difficult. I just forget about all that. He took some time off, took care of himself. Whatever he had to do there. I just get the feeling that the guy's had some rough go in his mind, mentally, and all of that. And I'm rooting for him to come back and show the talent that got him drafted in the top, what, three? The year he was drafted. Like, I really love I really love the skill of this player. And I love to see people that have struggled with some mental uh, um, mental health issues, if that might be the case, come back and rock it. So I really hope he does. Uh, Kulak, Sherratt, and Byron. And, of course, Sherratt is because he's going to be a UFA. I think they re-sign him. I think they really like it. Unless he doesn't want to be in Montreal anymore. I don't know. But I, I think that they would prefer to re-sign him. If everything goes south in Montreal and they're like right out of it, 
then I could see them getting a pick for him for sure. Um, the same as Matthew Perot. Um, Kulak, sure, depth guy. They have some guys coming up, some defensemen that he's probably taken a spot from right now. It's a possibility. I really like him, but if they're out of it, I could see it. And then Byron, he's been traded every year, and he just keeps on sticking around, sticking around. So I think he'll probably just keep sticking around. Um, is he on the injured reserve again? And that's one of the reasons he keeps sticking around. For He's got an A, but he gets injured a lot. All right. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Uh, tell me what you think about this fine programming down there in the comment section. And I'm going to do a little Perlo dance for you. Boo! We'll do the rest of them in the next video. Uh, until then, come over to my live. We'd love to have you. The NHL Pearl O Wisdom Show. Pearl dance to the land. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.